How about realignment? What is happening on the conference realignment front? I'm Pete Mundo on HeartlandCollegeSports.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We appreciate you being here. Well, how about this from Pete Thamel? Pete Thamel ESPN is reporting that Colorado and Arizona odds-on candidates to join the Big 12 Conference. That's what Pete Thamel is saying in a new report on Monday. Whew, boy, this just keeps getting juicier, doesn't it? In an article titled, Don't Trust Anyone, the latest on the Pac-12 drama as decision draw near, Pete Thamel dives into the latest on the Pac-12 struggles to hold together. And he talks about how there's maybe some people optimistic that Pac-12 Commissioner George Kleokov can pull off some short-term deal and try to keep the conference together for a few more years, while others are looking for the way out. Now, Thamel confirmed that there has been contact between the Big 12 and the Four Corner Schools. This was reported last week by The Athletic, and we told you about that. Thamel then says, according to sources, there has at least been minimal contact between the Big 12 and Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and Colorado. The contact has been emerged or has emerged to varying degrees and via various methods, depending on the school. But there's a bottom line pragmatism to the conversation. You can't blame anyone looking for options and what's out there per an industry source. Of course. Of course. So here are the two schools, he says, that have expressed the most interest to jump to the Big 12. Colorado, Arizona. Colorado has Big 12 roots. Deion Sanders, their head coach, resonates, of course, in the Dallas Metroplex. And, of course, Arizona's basketball first mindset potentially joining the Big 12 as the undisputed top league in America, is very appealing. And by the way, and I didn't know this, but there are years of administrative animus towards the Pac-12 dating back to former Commissioner Larry Scott's tenure at Arizona. Former Arizona AD Greg Byrne first uh, guessed Scott's missteps that set the league off course nearly a decade ago. It has been a decade of mistakes for the Pac-12. There's no doubt about it. So now you're sitting here, if you're the Big 12, and you're waiting for somebody to jump. It's going to take two. And if it's Colorado and Arizona, those are a great two. I have been a proponent of Colorado coming back to the Big 12. I know a lot of you disagree with me. I have been a huge fan of that since day one because of bringing back some of the ties to the old Big 12 North having some old, I don't want to say rivalries, but certain commonalities uh, back in this league. When you have a new era of college football, bringing back some familiarity isn't the worst thing in the world. In fact, it's a great thing to have. So that's potentially encouraging. And then on top of that, you look at this and you say, Arizona, Brett Yormark loves basketball. Brett Yormark is a basketball guy. He loves himself some hoops. He wants to see this league become not just what it is right now, the number one basketball conference in America. He wants this to be the preeminent basketball conference in America, and then he wants to spin it off and sell the football separately from the basketball because he believes the basketball is undervalued on the open market. He feels like right now basketball is a throw-in for the football deal. And Brett Yormark saying, I've got football in one hand, I've got basketball in the other, and you know what, let's split them up, and you can have everybody bid for them separately. It's, it's actually incredibly bright is what it is. I mean, if you're a restaurant and you've been throwing in the best Caesar salad in your city – if you order a chicken parm and you realize, wait, I can charge $15 for that Caesar salad that I'm giving people for free when they order a chicken parm. Why would I do that? Right? It makes perfect sense. And that's how Brett Yormark is finally thinking. And he's doing something. And he's thinking in a way that nobody else in college sports has done. And it really could be a game changer. So Arizona is like, wait, okay, so we can join this conference. We can have stability. We can make more money. We can have our basketball program going up against Kansas and Kansas State, and Baylor and Texas Tech, um, West Virginia. I mean, you've got Hall of Fame coaches, Bob Huggins. you got a great program like Iowa State. Could you imagine? I mean, Arizona going to Ames on a – Saturday when it's 15 degrees. I know the weather doesn't matter. I'm just kind of setting the scene outside. It's going to be an awesome environment inside the Coliseum.
that's going to be great. And Arizona, ask Arizona fans. They want to see that, or do they want to see, you know, uh, Washington State or Stanford in front of a half-filled stadium? Come on, it's not even close. So Arizona suddenly may be saying, you know what, this makes sense. And if they also can't stand the Pac-12 and feel like the Pac-12 has made mistake after mistake, that's even better. Now, the other question here is what about Washington and Oregon? They are still looking for the first bus to the Big Ten. What do they do? Pete Thamel reports here, at some point, knowing it doesn't make fiscal sense for Oregon and Washington to be long-term committed, do other Pac-12 schools seek to chart their own course? Colorado and Arizona, as he then notes, are the odds-on candidates to jump first. Colorado's jumped first before. Remember, Colorado bailed out of the Big 12 because they were worried the league was about to collapse. And Colorado felt like it didn't have a travel partner or it didn't have a partner, right? The old Big 12, they looked at it. They said, okay, Oklahoma has Oklahoma State. Kansas has Kansas State. Texas and Texas Tech, when A&M leave, who do we have? Who's our partner? Who's looking out for us? And the answer was nobody. So they looked out for themselves. They looked out for themselves, and they went to the Pac-12. And now if they're being smart, they're going to look out for themselves again. And they are going to come back to the Big 12. And every Big 12 fan should open them with open arms. Like, don't... I, I keep hearing this from Big 12 fans. Screw them, let them go. We don't want them here. We won. In that scenario, the Pac-12 will officially be dead. We have won. We may have lost a battle, but we have won the war. The Pac-12 will be a non-existent at least as a Power 5 conference, if and when that does happen. You've won the war. They're surrendering to you. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. Soak it up. And then just move on. And welcome Colorado back and enjoy the road trips to Boulder. Why be petty about it when you've won the war? That's the part I don't understand from some Big 12 fans. This makes all the sense in the world. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here to enjoy it. I'm here to celebrate it. Because to me, it's all about making this conference the clear number three conference in America behind the SEC and behind the Pac-12, or Pac-12, behind the SEC and behind the Big Ten. That's what matters. And that's what this can ultimately achieve. When the first two dominoes fall, it's game over.